Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I tell you, the accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So I guess I bring you messages to establish what you need to earn the present. And also I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now in a moment I would like to, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Marissa Jones. But before that I would like to say thank you so much for watching the show live at a later date as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. If you've never met before, then my name is Ray, and I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy. And I love to help women at crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, transform their present, so they can take charge of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use future life regression, past life regression, angelic reiki, meditation, hypnosis, and angel cards to help women who feel lost get clear on their reason for being here. Now, each episode of this show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Marissa Jones, who will be sharing her journey and how healing is a lifetime journey and the path to moving forward is facing your past. Now, uh, Marissa was born and raised in New York in an immigrant Sicilian, Sicilian family with an alcoholic parent. She faced many traumas that led to a turbulent life until she faced her, her faced her victim mentality and replaced it with a new mindset of positivity and balance. Marissa has started on a new mission of sharing the story of her life to inspire others and help them experience the same kind of healing she did. Marissa's core mission is to let people know they're not alone and show them ways to live without the fear or anger of their past trauma or abuse. Her new online platform, Everyday Being, provides a community of resources for healing to victims of trauma while bringing awareness to the programs available through her partners. She has also released a book called The Lotus Tattoo, which is a remarkably candid memoir about Marissa's transformation from child abuse, drugs and alcohol abuse, and being a bully to a happily married and successful IT professional, determined to inspire others who live with the secrets of a traumatic past. So without further delay, hello, Marissa, and welcome to the Angels of Destiny show. How are you today? I'm great. How are you, Ray? I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Uh, it's brilliant. Thank you for coming along. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts, as both Marissa and I want to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. We'll try to say hello to everyone who says hello and answer any questions or comments live or once the show is finished. So Marissa, why don't you tell us more about yourself and how healing is a lifetime journey and the path moving forward is facing your past? Thank you, Ray. So um, my mission is about full exposure. Uh, as you talked about, my past has a lot of trauma. Uh, you know, I've experienced a lot of trauma in my life. And for many of us who have experienced trauma in our lives, uh, we tend to kind of, it, it tends to hold us back. Um, you know, whether the trauma was psychological or emotional or physical, regardless of what the trauma is, we all kind of experience the same impacts. Um, there's, there's fear, there's anger, there's um, guilt, uh, regrets, shame, uh, and, and the effects are, you know, depression and suicidal thoughts and anxiety, and the list goes on and on, right? Mm -hmm. And what we and, and unless we resolve those, <clears throat> unless we really um, address and face our past and healing those, uh, it's hard for some of us to move forward. And for me, that was a big part of my life. You know, even though I, I was exposed to trauma, um, and I had been pushing forward. You know, we, I, I, minimalized, I minimized the effects that the trauma had on me. And even though I had depression and suicidal thoughts and, and it came out in ways with uh, a drug and alcohol abuse and I was a bully from the time I was a child until I was adult and those behaviors cycled for most of my life. Um, but I, I still minimized it. I, I didn't really fully realize how much it had impacted me because I was pushing forward. I was moving along. I was married. I had kids. I had a successful career. And and I didn't, you know, occasionally I had gone to a counselor or a therapist, but I didn't truly resolve those issues. And and it it impacted all of my decisions moving forward. And so when we hit when we have impacts of trauma, 
Um, you know, there's a lot of reasons why we stifle it. A lot of it is, you know, the, there's a stigma behind mental health. Uh, as human beings, we tend to, um, you know, we want to fit in. We don't want to mm -hmm. be an outcast. We don't want to be seen as vulnerable. Um, and, but that really hurts us in the end. And so we kind of stuff those skeletons that we have, you know, we stuff them in the closet and, and we don't tell people about them when we put on a brave face and we go out in the world. Um, and then we minimize our traumas by saying, well, my trauma is not as bad as other people, right? And I'm getting through and I'm pushing through. Uh, but by doing that, um, you know, we, it really, it really impacts our decision making day to day because you're making decisions based on a victim mindset and you're not making decisions from a healthy place. And so by doing that, um, you know, for me, uh, I did that for many, many years. And about 10 years ago, um, it kind of all fell apart and I hit what I call my mental rock bottom. And that's not a bad thing. You know, we, we always, you know, for us who are survivors, if we've been through trauma, we avoid that, right? We, we keep trying to, 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 you know, we're treading water. We always want to stay on top and, you know, we can survive this and we're fighters and we're going to make it through. But, but it, it always winds up catching up with us. And so for me, about 10 years ago, um, I was 45 years old and I was sleeping under the covers in a fetal position and I had severe PTSD and depression and suicidal thoughts and I was trying to cover it up with alcohol. And that was when I decided I needed to change because I couldn't, I couldn't accept that as being my normal anymore. For years, I just accepted it. And I didn't, I chose to, to continue moving forward. And so it wasn't until I dressed that. And um, I did that by kind of stepping out of my comfort zone. I had to step out of my comfort zone and, you know, what I call full exposure. I had to talk about it. I had to take those skeletons out of my closet and I had to start talking about it. I had to reach out. I had to get help. Um, and, and the only way to do that was to, to face my past, you know, to really say something is wrong and this is not normal and I am not healed and there's got to be a better place for me. And um, so that's why I think, you know, kind of hitting your rock bottom is sometimes a really good thing because it brings an awareness about you to say there's some there's got to be something better. There's there's got to be a better way to life. Um, and so and once you do that, and I like to call that as, you know, my expression is when where fear ends and healing begins. Right. Because you're you're putting that fear aside and you're coming out of your comfort zone and you're in full exposure. And once you do that then you have the strength to move forward and get the help that you need. Okay. Um, so sort of like, you know, did was it only in later life that you realized um, that all these traumas um, and everything were affecting you? Or did you know at the time, you know, when you were going through the um, drug stuff and the body stuff, did you know at the time, did you have an inkling or or were you just not aware of it? It wasn't only until later that, that it's kind of like hit you. It was, I was always aware of it. So even when I was a young kid, I had thoughts of suicide and depression. And, you know, what I write about all of it in my book, right? So the, the, the book is, is written from a, a mental health perspective. So I, I talk about all the mental mind junk that was going through my head all those years. So I always knew it was a problem. I knew it was a problem. I knew it was affecting me. And, and it came in it came in doses you know i had moments of happiness and then home, moments of real real despair um so it was it was a constant you know even back in the 80s i was reading alan watts and and carlos castaneda and and meditating and trying to find a way to heal but i wasn't ready yet for some reason i just wasn't ready yet because i wasn't ready to face really really face my past um i was always of the mindset where I had to keep moving forward, right? I was always looking to the future. How do I move forward? How do I move forward by just pushing aside my past? And it wasn't until I started addressing, really addressing uh, my past that I was able to take that step and start moving forward. Okay, so so what was the turning point that, that, you, that you kind of like thought, actually, I need to really address this I really need to address this now and 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 you know and face my past um to to move forward 
So it was it was about 10 years ago and I was I kind of hit my rock bottom and I had severe PTSD. And I think more than anything, my kids were really young and I realized that I was bullying them uh, in my behaviors and my in my anger and my depression. And it was impacting them. And I didn't want them. Uh, I was instilling the same fear in my kids that my dad fear instilled in me. And even though I wasn't uh, physically abusing them, I, I believe I was emotionally abusing them by my behaviors. And that's when I realized I either needed to, you know, my thoughts were, I need to get out of their lives. You know, I need to disappear and just they'll be better off without me. Um, and then the second thought was, I need to figure this out so that I can I can be there for them and I need to stop being selfish. It was it was kind of an awakening that I was being selfish in my victim mindset. And I know it's, you know, I don't want that to come across as negative, right? But <laughs> but, but it was. I was like, this is this is all I'm I'm making it all about me, right? And I need to start thinking differently and making a change. Um and so that's that's really what what it was just an awareness that I had to uh, just really kind of change everything about me. And the only way I knew how to do that was to start looking at my past. Um, and so when I think about the past, you know, the, I, I always say there's three levels of your past, right? There's, there's your recent past, which is something that may have happened, you know, a week ago or two weeks ago or two years ago. So at the time, my recent past was, you know, I was going through a divorce. And, and that was my recent past that was a trigger for, for all of this emotional drama. Um, but, then, but then I knew that you know, the next level of the past was my childhood because it came back down to my childhood uh, where I was acting out and behaving as if I was still that five-year-old scared little girl, right? And, and lashing out at people. And, and that's where it was kind of coming from. And so when I look at trying to heal myself, uh, I was looking at, you know, I started with the recent past, you know, trying to figure out how do I resolve all of this anger against my ex-husband and all of this, this stuff that I was going through. But then I needed to go back to my childhood and, and resolve that past as well. And what happened was, is when I was doing that, I started doing uh, meditation and hypnotherapy and counseling. And, and I was really doing it from a different mindset now. This was, I was like full on, I am going to fix myself, whatever it takes. Right. And, and, you know, I took it on like an IT project where, you know, I'm all in, right. I'm going to surround myself with every resource I can think of self-help books, meditation, journaling, yoga, uh, hypnotherapy. And what, what also came out of it was that I had um, some past lives that I needed to deal with. And so I think about the three levels of past that I that I wound up spending ten years on my journey fixing, which was you know recent past things that were in my life, and then it was my childhood traumas and past, and then it was this past lives that that always was kind of there, but didn't realize how much it had impacted me. Um, when I was a child, I had severe nightmares all the time, and these nightmares were recurring nightmares. And they were of me, but I was a different character, right? So I was a soldier, or I was a woman, or I was a young boy. And I had these recurring nightmares over and over again. And in those nightmares, they were extremely violent. Um, either I was hurting and killing someone else, or so I was being murdered or killed, or I was in this violent situation. And they always ended up in my death. And, uh, you know, I. I struggled with that because I didn't know where it was coming from. And, uh, and you know, in high school, I started having these like intuitions that they were some kind of past lives. And I started writing about them. And, um, you know, it didn't, I never really thought to address them. It was just part of who I was. And in my 40s, the nightmares came back. And so the recent past, right, triggered events of my childhood and then also started triggering events of my past lives. Yeah. And so it was just this cycle. And I started recognizing, you know, over my healing years that, you know, a, 
um, whenever, I, whenever I have a situation that I'm trying to go through, whether I'm going through a depression cycle or whether I'm angry about something or frustrated or, or just having a, a day where I really can't move forward, right? Something is holding me back because of some emotional thing that, that I'm dealing with or a physical ill, you know, like whether it's, you know, a physical pain, you can, you, you can feel trauma in your body. And so whether it's a physical pain or whether it's just your mindset, you know, you have this negative mindset and it's putting you down. I'm not good enough, or I don't value myself and all of that. Um, I always start to, which is a very different mindset. I start with the past, right? Yeah. I start with, you know, what's, what's on the surface. And so when we tend to um, when we look at, when we look at ourselves, right, I like to think of everything from a mind, body, and emotion perspective. So you'll see that on my website, everything is mind, body, and emotion, because it's what's going through your mind. How is your body accepting mm -hmm. it? Right. How is your, how is it impacting your physical self? And then how are the emotions? What are the emotions behind that? And so you start with that and then it's breaking down each one of those. And so, you know, if it's, if it's whatever it is holding you back, you know, look, um, whatever's keeping you from moving forward, look back, right? So you could look yeah. at a recent, something that happened recently. Um, and then just breaking it down from a mind perspective, from emotional perspective and from your physical perspective to try to get to the core issue. Because once you get down to the core issue, you can't move forward until you identify the core issue and then you resolve the core issue. That's the biggest thing. Identifying it is, is, is the first step, but then you have to resolve it. And once you resolve it, then you know how to move forward, you know? So a good example of that is um, I've, I've created a bunch of exercises that I do for myself, um, you know, from meditation and journaling. And I have this thing called uh, understanding your expectations and our expectations or our values, right, are imprinted in us. And sometimes they're conscious and sometimes they're not. And so breaking it down, like when you, when you, when your expectations are met or not being met, it immediately creates an emotional reaction, right? Mm -hmm. It creates an anger or frustration or happiness, right? If your expectations are being met, but you have these unconscious expectations or values. And so uh, getting down to, I have a series of questions that I created for myself and I go through this worksheet that's understanding your expectations to get down to the core issue. So, um, to give you an example, uh, a couple of years ago, I was hired to do uh, a, a, an IT project, and it was a five million dollar project. And I was promised, you know, a promotion with a lot more money and, you know, a career opportunity. And uh, so I completed the project, and it went very well. And I had a lot of people tell me how wonderful, you know, how successful the project went. Yeah. But there was this one individual, and he, you know, I happened to work for him and he was the only person who didn't see that. Right. And yeah. so I didn't get my, my promotion. And then on top of that, there was some discrimination. You know, my teams got given to men and there was like all this, there was yeah. harassment and he would, you know, he was ironically, he was being a bully to me, <laughs> which, you know, I was putting out a book about being a bully and here I am getting exposed to that. Yeah. And so um, so I, it, it really led me to a spiral of depression and I hadn't been that low in a long time. So I knew there was something deeper to that. Right. And so I, I took out my worksheet and I said, I'm going to do this. Right. And I walked through it. And the first thing was, you know, well, what was the event? Right. So the event was, I didn't get my promotion and I was being harassed. And so then the next step is, you know, what was my, expectation what was my emotional reaction well my emotional reaction was i fell into a depression and i was crying on my way to work every day and it was really impacting my personal relationships with my kids and my spouse and you know that was my emotional reaction and then the the next question i have is you know what was my expectation well on the surface my expectation was that i was treated respectfully and that i was getting a promotion 
But then I have this question that's really kind of gets down to the to, to the core issue. And it's what is the origin of the expectation? Right. And when I started to think about that, that that took me a while to yeah. come. Where is that expectation coming from? Now, on the surface, yeah, everyone wants to be respected and you expect to get a promotion. Yeah. Right? Really, what was the what was the origin of that? And two things surprised me of this. I came up with two, and one of them was that he, I placed an expectation that this individual put a value on who I was, right. and that was an eye opener for me because I was like, you know, I'm, I'm always been a strong individual and confident, even in my lowest points. <laughs> you, know, you know, fake it till you make it, right? Yeah. So, so even in my lowest times, I've always placed a value on who I was, and yet. I set an expectation that this one individual, even though dozens others said positive things, this one individual placed a value on who I was. And the second thing was that the abuse, the emotional abuse that I was being put through was still kind of an indication that there was some icky stuff left from my father, you know, his abuse, mm -hmm. even though I had thought I had overcome that. And so um, what that allowed me to do was, you know, the next series of questions are, well, do I, do I still want to change? Do I want to change my expectation? Yeah. Well, absolutely. Right. So what it does is it allows me to change my expectation. So my expectation is no one places a value on me except for me. That's yeah. my new expectation. Right. And so by doing that, it gives me a, a place of empowerment where now I could move forward with that new expectation. Yeah. So now instead of me being, um, you know, depressed and upset and just feeling inadequate because I had one individual place of value of who I was, I was able to, it was like, it was like a veil lifted and it was like, oh my goodness, I'm the only person who can place this value on who I am. Why did I, how did I let that happen? <clears throat> So it allowed me to move forward. And so for me, you know, I was able to start doing affirmations to remind myself of that. And, and I started doing meditations to remind myself of that, you know, continuing to do some workshops and blogging to remind myself of that. Um, and then the second thing was it allowed me to recognize that I still had some healing to do yeah. uh, regarding my past. And so I was able to, you know, I went to a couple of Reiki sessions, I did some hypnotherapy, and it really allowed me to explore that side to see, you know, to kind of resolve that abuse, because it was impacting how I was moving forward. I could not move forward because I was just stuck in this mindset of, of what this individual did to me. And so again, it's always going back to your past as to, you know, why, why are you feeling this way? What are your expectations? What are the values that have been imprinted on you? And some of them are unconscious and you don't even realize it, um, even though it's something so basic. Um, and it doesn't have to be anything, you know, it could be something like I went through the same exercises with my son um, because he was, you know, failing school mm -hmm. and I didn't know how to get him motivated. And he was, you know, uh, you know, my reaction was yelling at him or grounding him. And, you know, he was not doing his chores. I'd have to ask him three or four times <laughs> to do his chores. Right. And he wasn't doing them. And, and, you know, my, my reactions to him were, were coming from a place of just, you know, being anger and frustrated. But when I worked through the understanding your expectations exercise, um, and I also did what I call focus journaling, where I focus on a specific event, which was the event with my son. And I look at it from a mind, body and emotion perspective. And so by doing that, I was able to determine that, you know, what was I thinking? You know, what, what am I thinking about when it comes to him? What am I feeling? And how is it affecting me? So it was basically, you know, it was breaking my heart that he was failing, but I was disappointed. And I, and I also identified that one, I had placed expectations on him to be as motivated and driven about school as I was, right? <laughs> and, and that was unfair because he has other passions, right? And so yeah. my expectations of him were, 
were, were unfair. So I was reacting to him based on my unfair expectations. Uh, but I also recognized that I was disappointed, but more because I, you know, I wanted him to be more selfless, selfless. I wanted him to be more respectful of myself and my husband when we asked him to do chores or to be on time to class. And so yeah. what that did was it allowed me to have a different conversation with my son. You know, for one, I've changed my expectation where I push him to be as motivated and driven for school as I am. Right. But now I can, you know, now I can talk to him about what are his motivations. Right. What, where where are his passions and focus on that? And then the other thing is that, you know, I was able to have a conversation with him about being respectful of his teachers by showing up on time for class or being respectful of myself and my husband when we ask him to do some chores. And having that different mindset allowed me to have a different conversation with my son because yeah. I was able to get down to the core issue of what that was. And, and now we're able to move forward, right? And we are moving forward in a lot more positive way. So it really gets down to kind of getting down to the core issue of, of breaking down what's happened in your past and why you're reacting a certain way so that you can take action to move forward. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's amazing how much the past, um, you know, does affect us. You know, obviously, um, I do past life regression and the people that um, have, you know, that have, uh, have come to me and um, done past life regression that has changed their their present time when they've actually gone back and they've seen where these triggers were um what what happened you know as to why it was affecting them um in in the here and now and i love the way um you've, you've got those questions that actually get you thinking um about uh, about where these issues actually came from um and how to resolve them yeah, and if you and if you work through the worksheet and you get down where you can't find the origin, that's when my go-to is past life, right? Because if you can't find what where the origin is, uh, for example, I've always had an extreme fear of of deep water, so you know, going to Sea World or going to an aquarium would set me in a huge panic mode, like panic attack where I would be near the aquarium or in the aquarium or near a big body of water. And I would just start shaking and anxiety. And it's like, I had to do everything I could to get out. And I yeah. literally remember one time uh, where I was, I was in SeaWorld and they opened this, these curtains after a movie and it was these huge shark tanks. And I literally started climbing over the chairs to get out. <laughs> I was terrified. Um, and and I never knew where that fear came from. And then I was doing a past life regression. Well, I was doing a hypnotherapy session, which went into an accidental past life yeah. regression. <clears throat> and uh, what happened was, is I was of Greek descent. It was in like the, you know, 600 BC. It was a long time ago. And uh, I was standing by a river. And in my past life regression, a my brother stabbed me from behind and i he pushed me into the water and i drowned and after that incident uh in the past life regression i was immediately surrounded by these light beings who pulled me really really fast through like a tunnel underwater <clears throat> and we just went through the water and we came out into kind of a between life state. And I was able to cleanse myself of that death and move on to the next life. Yeah. And I never thought about the water, you know, fears when I was having that past life regression. But then several months later, I was on vacation with a girlfriend and I didn't even think about it. I jumped in the water and I was swimming and I would never go past my knees, right? And <laughs> yeah. I was swimming with my head underwater. And I just remember having this realization, oh my goodness, I have no fear. And it was just crazy. And so I, I, you know, I was able to trace that back to the past life regression because I was able to resolve that. Yeah. And now I can go into an aquarium and not have a panic attack. It's just crazy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so you don't think about what kind of fears that you may have, um, you know, and they're unknown. Uh, but if you have these unknowns, you know, try to figure out where they're coming from and maybe do a past life regression to kind of get you over them. But that always kept me from moving forward, right? And, yeah. and even though it's minor because you know, who cares if I swim in the ocean or not, right? But but it was impacting, you know, I couldn't take my kids to the aquarium ever when they were little. I, yeah. I couldn't get myself to do it. So it kept me from moving forward and having experiences with my kids. Yeah, yeah, it, it's amazing how much um, impact it can it can have on your on your on your present life. So, where did the title of your book come from? So, the title, "The Lotus Tattoo: uh, One Woman's Grit from Bully to Redemption," is the subtitle. And uh, when I was going through my healing journey, I had no idea where to begin. Uh, I knew I had to change. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what resources to pull. So I started doing what everybody typically does is do Google. So I started, I started Googling transformation. I started Googling healing and all these similar images kept coming up and they were of doves and hearts and ohm symbols and a lotus tattoos. And I started reading and I really resonated with that. So I kind of took all those pieces together and I went out and the first thing I did was I got a really big tattoo of a lotus flower um, with the symbol Om and, and out of it was coming a dove holding a heart. And for me, that really was, um, you know, the lo the story of the lotus flower is, you know, the lotus flower is, is a seed, begins as a seed. Yeah the bottom of a mud pit and through all obstacles it kind of blooms and it comes above the water into a beautiful flower and i didn't believe that when i got the tattoo but that was my dream so um, i put it right in front you know between my rib and my hip and uh every day i woke up and i saw it and every day it was that's my goal that's my goal is to be transformed my goal is to find happiness the dove represented it represented God because when I was a kid, I lost my faith in God because I was abused. And I used to pray that, you know, my father would yeah. die sleep before he killed me. Um, and, and, and I never felt my prayers were heard. So I lost my faith in God and I wanted that back because even though, you know, even though I didn't have faith, I felt like I needed some kind of faith to, to move yeah. me forward. And so that was that. So the title comes from kind of my hope of transformation, uh, which which it took me about two years of a lot of uh, therapy and hypnotherapy. I was doing hypnotherapy about two to three days a week in the first year. Um, and then I was going every month for another five years. And that that really helped me a lot. Yeah. 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 Hypnoth hypnotherapy is um, an absolutely amazing um thing because it really does delve deep in, into your into your subconscious uh, mind so so what are your plans with um, with the book and everything else you're you're doing at the moment so uh, what I'm doing is I'm writing a lot of these things that I've built for myself um, you know the understanding your expectations and you know recognizing depression cycles and journaling and for emotional support so what I've done is I've put some of them on my website, but I've written some workshops. So I'm going to start teaching some workshops around them. Now, my goal is really to bring awareness to the different types of healing modalities out there, uh, to bring awareness to the fact that you can heal yourself. Um, again, it's about full exposure. Um, my book is... Uh, it's it really is full exposure. Every every little thought in my head from the time I was three until you know until last year when the book was published, yeah. it's all out there. And you know I was terrified to 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 expose myself, but I found that no matter how crazy the stories were, somebody has come forward and said they resonated with the story. Yeah that story or that story. So we all go through it. It's normal, especially when you've been through trauma, but people are fearful. So 
you know, my goal is to bring awareness to the to the healing modalities that are out there, to, to bring awareness, to, to let people know that they're not alone. You know, the yeah. thoughts that are going in their head, they're not bad people, right? For a long time, I thought I was a bad person because of my thoughts, right? Um, and and so it's it's just bringing awareness and showing people kind of the tools that I've put together for myself to help hopefully help them. Um, you know, my site is is called Everyday Being because it's about finding the uh, surrounding yourself with the tools and resources that that help me get through the day. Right. And mm -hmm. you know, I always base my mental health on a scale of one to ten. Right. And it used to be on the low ends of the scale for many, many years. And in the last 10 years, it's it's close to a 10. And I yeah, it's 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 such a freeing, freeing feeling. Now, it doesn't mean I don't have highs and lows. There's a no. lot of stress in life. There's challenges. Right. So so I do um, I do have challenges. But but the the tools that I've created for myself are a way of me, you know, that's my everyday being. It's, yeah. it's, you know, I may not do yoga every day, but I'm aware enough to know when I need it. You know, I may not listen to, I may not meditate or listen to positive podcasts or music or, or do journaling every day, but I, I'm aware enough to know when I need it so that I can pull them out and help me get through the, those difficult times. And that's what I'm trying to do is to, you know, not say this is the answer yeah. for you, but to say, here's everything that's out there to help you because I didn't know where to go. And yeah. I spent the last 10 years investigating and trial and error, you know, uh, basically I was like a, a, a lab rat for myself, just trying to, trying to figure out what works and what doesn't work. And what works for me may not work for someone else, but it's just letting people know that it's out there. Um, and, and adding resources to my, you know, I have partner resources that they provide blogs because I'm not an expert on meditation no. or therapy, but I have people who do. So they post blogs on my website. I, they, I, I talk about their programs and stuff. Um, so it's really exciting. Um, you know, again, it's, it's full exposure, just getting myself out there and get, getting people, um, to, 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 take the step forward yeah. to start addressing these issues because they don't, I don't think people realize how much their trauma really impacts them on a day-to-day -day basis until it hits them full on. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. It's kind of like recognizing it before it hits you full on. So you can actually start taking action right. um, uh, sooner rather than later. Right. And uh, yeah, that that um, that that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, you know, and I just I just love the title of, of that book. It's, it's it's so brilliant. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I know the first thing I tell people was like, they look at me and they go, "Wait, you were a bully?" Uh, yeah, I was a bully. <laughs> and the, they, the first thing they always ask is, "Do you have a tattoo? Do you have a lotus tattoo?" And there you go. Is, yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. But I'm not um, showing it to you. <laughs> There's actually okay if you if if you want there's a hidden page on my website with a picture of the tattoo. <laughs> okay, so yeah. you've heard it first. Go to Marissa's website and uh, go and hunt for that tattoo. Right, right. <laughs> mm, interesting. I didn't do that. I didn't remember see that one when I was stalking you to remember my stuff about you earlier. <laughs> Let's go back to that one. Uh, so, as you know, I do um, guided meditation, angel card readings, and each week I like to ask my guests what they would like. So, Marissa, would you like me to do a guided meditation or a pull an angel card for you and those watching? So, in all the crazy things I have done to try to fix myself, I have never had an angel card reading. Okay. <laughs> so, I would love to do one. Okay, in that case, we will we will pull a card. So um, let's just get the cards there. So give them a quick cleanse and a bless. And just a reminder that um, when I do angel cards, I don't predict the future with them. Um, therefore, what you need to know for your highest good at this moment in time, because although I work with the past, and, and going into the future, when you heal those, you come back to the present. So it's all about being in, in the present. So does Marissa and everyone who's watching this, whether live or the replay, need to know for their highest good. 
Thank you, Marissa, and everyone who is watching this live on the internet. Okay. So, very, I just love the way the cards always come out. Grounding, go deep, explore your roots. Oh, I love that. <laughs> That is so perfect. Oh, <laughs> how, how, see, that, that's the angels because they join in with the show as well. They're kind of like, we're making our presence felt now. And uh, um, yeah, so it, it's just, it really is just confirmation for you um, of, of what you're doing is absolutely right. And, you know, you're on the right path of the grounding um, and going deep to explore your roots and you know this where your roots come up into the present as to what they bring to you um to now and of course to everyone watching it is say you know make sure you're grounding yourself um that you're you know you're going you're taking that time to introspectively look at where any issues might be um coming from from your past and that so yeah it's absolutely a brilliant card to uh that's to, awesome to come out <laughs> I just love that. I just love the way you um, they work, um, and it's a beautiful picture as well. You know, just lying by a tree. I like that. It's so relaxing. <laughs> it, it is. It's one of those cards you look at and you can't kind of like picture yourself there now. Just, well, I just sitting there, nice and nice and relaxed. Right, uh, feeling the warmth of the sun. I absolutely love that. I, you yeah. know, I, I talk to my angels and spirit guides every day and they always give me signs and this is a great sign. So thank you. Yeah, uh, you're, you're, you're welcome. So uh, Marissa, do you have any insights or thoughts to leave our viewers? Yeah, you know, I just, you know, I, I think for a lot of us who have been through trauma, we tend to beat ourselves up all the time and we do take the blame for it. Um, uh, you know, and, and we're pretty down on ourselves. So I would have to say, you know, most importantly, forgive yourself um, because, you know, forgive yourself and self-compassion, I think are the two key things that I would like to leave everyone. Every day, whatever you're going through, forgive yourself, forgive those around you um, and, and have self-compassion, you know, tell yourself the positive things uh, you know, you are good enough. You're extremely valuable. You are of value to those around you. And, you know, when you heal and you are in a coming from a place of love and, and a healthy place, you can move forward positively and just do amazing things and really touch those around you in a positive way. Oh, that's brilliant. They're brilliant words. Um, thank you for that one. So everyone, I hope you enjoy, have enjoyed this and found it insightful. And the words of wisdom that Marissa has given you um, will help you further on your journey. So Marissa, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? Uh, you can just go to myeverydaybeing.com uh, and all the information is there. You, there. My contact is there. There's links to my Instagram and Facebook. So myeverydaybeing.com and uh, that's where you can find me. And is that where we can find the tattoo? Uh, yes. It's <laughs> hidden. It is hidden. But if you email me, I'll send you a link. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm going to go. I'm going to try. I'm going to stalk you again. Because uh, <laughs> I always stalk my guests. It's like uh, this, I'm allowed to. It's, it's an official stalker <laughs> to, to find information. Let me know when you find it. <laughs> I will do. I will definitely let you know. So thank you everyone so much for watching and I would like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you. And if you have reached that crossroads in your life and need help finding your destiny and getting clear on your path, then I'd love to be that guide for you. Reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free 20 to 30 minute video call where we can talk about how I can help you on your journey. And um, moving on, um, the exciting news is that the online membership site is on its way. I'm upgrading my website, getting the membership site um, uh, up and running on that. So please get ready to check that out. And I'm going to be running a um, three day retreat down in Glastonbury in September, um, where we're going to be working with St. Germain, Mary Magdalene, 
future life, past life, um, and lots of lots of other things down there. So if you're interested in joining either of, that, either of those, please do uh, contact me for more details. And I look forward to you joining me next Monday at 8 p.m. where my guest will be Carol Ritchie. So um, thank you again, Marissa, for, um, for coming on and being my guest. Um, it's been absolutely wonderful having you, and I've loved your story. Um, thank you. And I love the love too. <laughs> Thank you. It's been so much fun. Thank you, everyone, for joining. It's really yeah. good to see you. Thanks, and, and thank you, everyone, also for watching. And I'll uh, see you next week. So have a wonderful rest of the evening. And Marissa, have a wonderful rest of the afternoon. You too. Thank you. Thanks, so everyone. Bye-bye.